Thank you very much, Eddie Delisepe, for coming on. How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing, dude? Good. I'm, I'm great, man. Life is fantastic. Do you remember the first time we met? Was it at a much event? No. Oh. You don't remember? I don't remember. It was at Yuck Yuck's Comedy Club. Did I get thrown out? And you got thrown out, and you had you're on stage, and all, and you all the comics hated your guts. I liked it because you're like, this guy really doesn't give a fuck. And you had a lightsaber with you. Do you remember that? No, I don't. I don't remember the lightsaber. And Mark Breslin from the host of the Yuck Yuck. He came on the speaker. The whatever. The yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And he wanted to speak to you. Yes. In the room. And he said, "Can we can we speak to you?" And uh, and he's like, "Yeah, hold on." And you went to get your lightsaber to talk to him. <laughs> we we're all laughing. So that uh, was the funniest thing I've ever seen. We're like, "Hold on, I need my yeah." Hey, Mark, chill I need out my, here a second, my okay? future, I need my I'm, toy. I'm not leaving without my lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk to an adult without my toy. I thought it was so funny. Wait, you hold, you aim the figure. Hold on, went across the room, grabbed your lightsaber, and then went to go speak to. Hey, him. Mark, you're only one of the most important people for Canadian comedians, and you give them their first break. But I need my 99 cent lightsaber. Give me a moment here. Uh, Je before we get into your great career, Eddie, and, and of course your tour, I think I've changed. We'll talk about all of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. JC, I've told you this story before, and I wasn't sure if you actually even believed me. Um, I had done stand-up two times in my career. The first time was that one where I was at... It was uh, a full house, too. It, it was a full house, and I and I kind of... Were you that, hosting that night? I something? wasn't host. I hosted another night, which oh, I actually had okay. a lot of success at. I did, I did okay. Right. Um, but that first one was my kind of Andy Kaufman-esque sort of shtick, yeah. knowing I'd get thrown out. I mean, all the I, comics knew you were doing something. I was doing something because yeah. I was recording it, and it was for the time when I was working on the old show right, right, to right. play it the next time. So what I did, I first I remembered being, a, I, 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 I pretended I was a deaf comedian. <laughs> so I, I remember the guy was calling my name, this guy, Jack. He was one of the hosts. Do you remember the, yeah, uh, Jack someone? Yeah, I think so. I can't remember. I remember the, some, some moments of that night. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I think I remember the deaf stuff. <laughs> so, they, yeah, they were like, is Todd really, Shapiro? You, you don't really forget that stuff. <laughs> no, they're like, is Todd Shapiro here? Is Todd Shapiro here? And I, I didn't go up. And finally, like, all right, I, I, I guess we got to move on. And then I did, uh, like, in a very deaf kind of uh, voice, which yeah. is uh, it's good for a comedy club. Maybe not good to relay on radio, because I never know what offends people these days, even right, though right. there's nothing offensive right. uh, by it. It was just, like, my shtick, my joke. And then I went up there, pretending I was late, saying I was the world's first ever deaf comedian, and I don't care if you don't laugh at my jokes, because I can't fucking hear you anyway. That's, <laughs> that was right. kind of, like, my opening line. Yeah. But then I went on way too long. I was totally unfunny. And then I got in this war with Jack, the host, to the point where literally two bouncers had to come and pick me up. And I remember, like, <laughs> actually doing, like, Andy Kaufman waving my legs after Mark Breslin was, like, asking me to get off. And then, so, so Eddie Della said, I was there on that night. That, you were on that night going, fuck, this guy's wasting my time, probably. <laughs> you were probably I, the feature. I, I know. I did, a, I did a spot after you. Oh, shit. And then I remember talking about it for a bit. And uh, we were all like, what the hell just happened here? It was pretty funny. Well, I mean, it's shock value at comedy clubs. And that's what, you know, it's right. not always, it's not always like pure great comedy. Some guys just go to shock people. Right. And at that time I was completely inexperienced and I knew the only way to kind of resonate was to do just that. Right. Shock him. And that's what Breslin actually said to me when he spoke to me. And I he, mean, you were memorable. People remembered you. That, and that's exactly what he, he said to me this. He goes, you actually were kind of nice at the start. I started right. like doing like, I did the deaf thing and everyone knew that was kind of a funny joke. Right, uh, and and then I, I I did this other thing with uh anyway with a, with a visor. I was asking people to 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 throw it in. I'm like I'm a dumb homeless guy, like right, that right, kind right. of thing. Like <laughs> and a terrible job. But but he actually said he kind of had an approach here. If you want to consider this, you obviously have balls to go on stage, but maybe go with the nice guy approach. Don't try and kind of you, you don't see like Sandler going up on stage being like hey I'm nice and then being a dick after. Right, right, right. So to, to get into one kind of sort of personality mode. Uh, uh, and it was it was really neat to have him talk to me. And then I realized, man, that takes a lot of effort, a lot of work, and a lot of courage. Uh, you've been doing it from what I read, dude, since you were like 17 years old was your first uh, time? 19? I've been doing it like 14 years, dude. Wow. Is that crazy? That, I That's mean, all a blur. I don't remember anything. So, so did you, <laughs> did know you always know, on. Eddie, did you always know you wanted to, to jump up on stage and, and, and entertain by making people you laugh? You know, I was the kind of kid that was like, if you sat next to me in school, you'd get in trouble. But I was yeah. never in front of everybody funny. I was good one-on-one -on -one like that. So I treat an audience like I was like, I'm talking to one person all the time. So it's like, I was never a class, I was like a funny guy, but never like a big class clown kind of guy. Excellent. So but I knew I wanted to be a comedian. That's what I, since I was a kid. You just had, an, and, and did you, like, were you hesitant though, because of the uh, fears of not being able to make a great living out of this stuff? Uh, that's always I never thought about the money. I always thought about just being funny. I remember like, my first time was horrific. Like you're, at that time, you, I mean, 
It wasn't horrific. You were in control uh, to a degree. Still pretty horrific. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> but my first time, I was 17. I was at Yuck Yuck's Comedy Club. At the time, I was young in Eglinton. And I remember uh, first time on stage, first time having my voice amplified by a microphone, wow. first time. Ever, I was 17, dude. And I, uh, I remember there's a guy next to me. Uh, and I was like on a bail. It was like 11.30 at night. I'm like, I got school in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I got, so this guy looked just like Rick Moranis. I'll never forget it. He would look to me and he was like, uh, I said, I think I'm going to bail. And he looked at me and he goes, um, nah, just be yourself up there. I was like, okay. And I turned away for a second and I turned back and he was tuning a violin. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I go, what's that? It's, oh, you know, I'm incorporating this into comedy. I'm like, and like that, just like tuning it. I was like, this is so, f hanging out, I'm hanging out with crazy people. Went up, I bombed so bad I got booed off because I was making fun of people in the audience because I didn't do well. Oh, yeah. So if you don't have their admiration, you're making <laughs> yeah, fun of them. Yeah, they're like, who yeah, the fuck yeah. is this fucking little twerp? Yeah. <laughs> and then, I know, you get defensive, worst thing a comic can do. And then I went home. I took the Eglinton West bus all the way uh, to, uh, to, uh, to where I grew up. And uh, my mom doesn't know anything. My mom's from Peru. She doesn't know anything about like show business. She just thinks you just show up at a job interview and like, hey, can I be funny here? And like, yeah, sure. So I uh, went home. I put my head down on the table. I started crying. Aww. She put her hand on my back and go, did they hire you? And, that was <laughs> <laughs> and I never went back for two years, dude. Open up to us, Eddie Vincepi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have that just on call? That, yeah. Wow. Whenever people start to show emotion, I try and exploit more out of them by music. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, I didn't go back for two years. Two years? You didn't work out? Well, I mean, uh, 17 is a young age. Yeah. yeah. This shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that would be young to even try and get And then do an open mics, place. and then uh, eventually I got, uh, I got a much, and then... Um, uh, and then touring around with Yucks and uh, just generally uh, touring around Canada. And then I moved to LA about a year and a half ago. How long have you been? Uh, okay, so a year and a half in LA. Um, uh, does it help being in comedy and having such great hair so at least like the women just, just sort of look at you even if they're not laughing? It's, going, my, it's, it's my tits. Yeah, 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 <laughs> my eyes are down here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's real. <laughs> it's real, all right, guys? <laughs> well, hey, what's up? Just got people texting me. I'm Roddy. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's awesome. Leave a comment and we'll read the best ones on the air.